packaging to furniture, from clothing to computers, plastics are everywhere and they're having a huge impact on our environment. So this week we've come to a plastics processing plant in Dieppe in the north of France to find out about the very latest in bioplastic technology. Is it really a viable green alternative? Experts agree that something needs to be done to cut down on plastic waste. Huge swills of it are building up in our oceans. And on dry land, inorganic rubbish has become a huge clean-up problem. With the latest research saying plastics are even entering our bloodstreams. Over the last half century, mankind has produced enough plastic to cover the face of the earth six times over. So no wonder our oceans have become giant rubbish bins home to huge plastic continents. These are floating swills of waste and made up of small particles and not solid enough to walk on, but they are huge, stretching thousands of kilometers. Here's one team in the Atlantic Ocean assessing the damage. sailing on the high seas and on particles of plastic. These scientists collected more than 42,000 pieces of plastic waste during their five weeks around Bermuda, some spots providing a greater catch than others. While we've been averaging 100 or 200 pieces of plastic per tow, last Monday we entered this region at about 31 degrees north, 41 degrees west, with a lot more plastic in it. Most of the trash is small in size, but some larger items okay, remain. Okay. At one stage, the crew dredges up a bucket containing proof the problem is well inside the ocean's ecosystem. And along with the bucket were two fish. And in one of the fish's stomachs, we emptied the stomach contents and we found 47 pieces of plastic. So good size, you know, several millimeter, the size of a pencil eraser. Environmentalists have long warned about the huge quantities of waste building up in our waters. One campaign group estimates we throw 675 tons of plastic into the sea every single day. An enormous swill of debris known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch was found in the late 1990s. And other so-called plastic continents have been charted across the world, growing all the time. They're full of water-worn tiny chunks which could prove very tricky to clean up. Nevertheless, one Dutch architecture firm believes there is a solution. They've launched a research project called Recycled Island and hope one day to turn the plastic waste into a livable, floating environment. That plan, though, is still at the conceptual stage. Here's a riddle for you. How do you use a potato to make plastic? Well, that's exactly what this company does. They use potato starch to produce these granules, which are then melted down to make fully biodegradable plastic products. But while using organic materials might sound like the answer to all our problems, at the moment it only represents a tiny proportion of the global market. At first, the idea of making biodegradable plastic bags from starch seemed like a technological breakthrough. Today, these little pellets are the key to the manufacture of a growing number of disposable products. This bioplastic factory in Dieppe has gone from strength to strength. The humble potato is the crucial ingredient to making around 250 million throwaway bags a year and their plans to keep building on their success. The technology is still in its early stages, and we've got to keep on trying. We've got to find production methods to use the minimum amount of arable land to be able to move the industry forward. Bioplastics can be made from maize, potatoes or even sugarcane. They could be really good for the environment, but there are a few hurdles in the way. Before ending up as an eco-friendly bin bag, vast amounts of energy must first be used to cultivate, irrigate and fertilize the crops used. On top of that, the potatoes relied on here at Dieppe make a return trip through Germany, altogether making a pretty big carbon footprint for a supposedly environmentally friendly product. The bill's pretty big too. This chain of cafes is popular with eco-savvy customers, its owner tried investing in bioplastic packaging, but was forced to change his mind. 
People want to see through the material, and that's what you get with plastic. We don't have a lot of choice in that respect, but there's also the economic aspect to consider. Some products are beyond our reach because we just can't afford them. Organic plastics may cost the earth, but they could help save the planet. They're sustainably produced and, unlike petroplastics, can disintegrate relatively quickly if disposed of properly. But that's a big if. They've got to be thrown away with organic waste or composted. France, like many countries, doesn't have the recycling system in place to deal with bioplastics separately to ordinary plastic. So you've seen the process. This is what the potatoes in this factory end up as. One 100% biodegradable rubbish sack. But unfortunately, it's very much an exception. Most of the world's plastic take years to break down into tiny particles, but never fully disintegrate. And experts are very worried about the health consequences of that in the developing world and in the West. In Western countries, plastic has revolutionized everyday life. It's in hundreds of products, virtually inescapable. Plastic takes centuries to biodegrade, 260 million tonnes are produced each year and only a fraction is recycled. But the impact goes well beyond the environment. A lesser known fact is that plastic can also affect our health. Austrian Werner Boot has spent 10 years investigating the subject and his conclusions are startling. Plastic contains hazardous substances which can seep into our bodies. What we found out was horrible. Baby suitors, baby bottles which were highly contaminated. Those substances are responsible for cancer, for uh, heart diseases, for allergic reactions, for uh, autism, for all kinds of, and above all, for infertility. One example is bisphenol A or BPA, a chemical widely used to make plastic, particularly in food packaging. It's also found in babies' pacifiers or bottles. Studies have shown that BPA contaminates the milk, then infiltrates an infant's thyroid and sexual organs. It is also links to diabetes. In France, the chemical has been banned in products for children, but only since June this year. Another family of chemicals called phthalates are used to make plastic more flexible, transparent or durable. Again, unintended side effects, including disturbances to human hormone systems and reducing male fertility. Their use has recently been banned in children's toys. It's time to, to react, it's time to say no to plastics as, far, as, as much as possible and it's time to say I want my plastic clean, I don't want harmful substances in my plastic. The European Union is trying to heed these words. Since 2005, a directive requires manufacturers to prove the safety of all products on the market. Well, I'm afraid it's already time to wrap up this week's environment program in recycled, biodegradable plastic, though, of course. Thanks to Rabba Zanoon on camera and Yong Chim and Rennie Kaplan in production. See you next time.